What up, y'all? It's Mr. Dan Tamari Melly, and listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Thursday, November 7th, 2019, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mo, that's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Ben Affleck has signed on to star in the upcoming thriller from director Robert Rodriguez titled Hypnotic. The actor will appear as a detective investigating a number of high-end heists. Affleck's character will also come across a mystery involving his missing daughter and a secret government program. Jeff Robinoff's Eight, uh, studio Eight and Mark Gill's Stolas Studios are partnering on the project. Rodriguez, who last helmed the sci-fi adventure Alita, uh, Battle Angel, is producing with Robinov, Guy Dinella, and John Graham. The production is set to star in April. Robinov said in a statement working with Ben on his award-winning projects, including Argo in the Town, I have seen how his versatility and creativity has made him one of the most talented filmmakers, both in front and behind the camera. He continued by saying it's very meaningful to be collaborating with Ben again on this uniquely riveting suspense thriller, and I know he and Robert will make a terrific team together for this film. Affleck will next be seen in The Way Back about a man struggling with addiction who becomes the coach of a basketball team at his former high school. <clears throat> 47 year old will also be featured in Netflix as The Last Thing He Wanted and Ridley Scott's film The Last Duel with Matt Damon. Jay Fox voices an aspiring jazz musician who feels he might have just gotten his big break in the first teaser's trailer for Disney and Pixar's upcoming anime film Soul. The clip, released on Wednesday, features Fox's character Joe Gardner playing the piano and asking the audience what they want to be remembered for in their lives. Gardner, after scoring a jazz gig, falls into a sewer while walking around New York City where he finds himself entering into a fantastical world. Gardner is transformed into a small blue version of himself that resembles a spirit. He then encounters another character that looks like him named 22, voiced by Tina Fey. The synopsis reads in the film, just when Joe thinks his dream might be in reach, a single unexpected step sends him to a fantastical place where he's forced to think again about what it truly means to have soul. So from director Peter Doctor and co-directed by Kim Powers will arrive in theaters on June 19th. Quest Love, David Diggs, and Felicia Rashad will also provide voices. Disney and Pixar will next release Onward on March 6, a fantasy adventure featuring the voices of Tom Hodlin and Chris Pratt. <coughs> Netflix is giving a glimpse of Vanessa Hutchins in the night before Christmas. The streaming service released a first trailer Thursday featuring Hutchins as Brooke, a modern-day woman who falls for coal, played by Josh Whitehouse, a man who says he's a medieval knight. The preview shows Brooke and Cole flirt as Brooke introduces the 14th century knight to modern life. Brooke begins to believe that Cole could be a real-time traveler. When she asks a friend, what if Cole really is who he says he is? What if there are things beyond our comprehension? The Night Before Christmas is directed by Monica Mitchell and co-stars Emmanuel Chiriki, Harry Jarvis, and Ella Kenyon. Hutchins and Mitchell said in an interview with Finding 29 that Brooks is an independent woman with romantic sensibilities. The actor says the character was really appealing to me because she is a strong, logical, intelligent young woman who is looking for love but isn't someone who needs to be rescued. Mitchell added, Brooke is not someone who is trying to escape her life. We want to show that you can still really need someone and fall in love with them even if you don't need to be saved from yourself. The Night Before Christmas premieres November 21st. Hutchins previously starred in the Netflix holiday movie The Princess Switch and will return in a sequel, The Princess Switch Switched Again. Elizabeth Moss is being haunted by an abusive ex-lover in the new trailer for Universal's upcoming throw, The Invisible Man. The Moss is featured in a clip released on Wednesday, escaping, uh, narrowly is running away, escaping from her partner, played by Oliver Jackson Cohen, in the middle of the night. The actress is, then finds out that her ex has committed suicide and has left her millions. 
Moss can't shake the feeling, however, that Jackson Cohen is still around when mysterious events keep happening around her. She soon discovered that her ex has somehow turned invisible and is using his new power to torment her and her new loved ones. Jackson Cohen's obsession turns violent as Moss desperately attempts to prove to authorities that she is being targeted by someone who can't be seen. The Invisible Man, from writer, director, and executive producer Leigh Wennell, is set to arrive in theaters on February 28th. Jason Bloom, of Bloom House Production, is producing. Harriet Dyer, Aldous Hodge, and Storm Reid also star. Moss is best known for starring on the Hulu's The Handmaid's Tale. Hulu renewed the series for fourth season in July. Jason Momoa spent time riding motorcycles and shooting arrows with James Corden on the Late Late Show after the comedian called him up to hang out. Aquaman star spent two hours with Corden arriving to pick him up with a pair of vintage motorcycles. Momoa had Corden dress up as a leather-clad biker and ride along in his sidecar due to the late-night host being scared to ride a motorcycle alone. Momoa also had Corden uh, place an apple on top of his head during an archery training and attempted to shoot it off with blindfold. Corden moved away, instead replacing him with a dummy. Momoa was able to shoot the apple off. However, the arrow went through the dummy's head. The duo ended their manly day by practicing how to use a whip with the new actor learning how to do it while filming his new Apple TV Plus series, C. Corden eventually got the hang of it and was able to crack an egg open using a whip. Corden said after the feeling of rush of using a whip, got him alive, I would literally, I would literally quit my job just to hang out with you every day. C recently premiered alongside the launch of Apple TV+. Plus. The series follows Momoa as he leads a tribe in a post-apocalyptic world where humans have the loss of set or sight. Liz Aldana will star in a Netflix adaptation of the book from scratch. The streaming service announced in a tweet Thursday that Saldana has joined the new limited series based on the Tempry Lock memoir. Saldana will also executive produce the project with Reese Witherspoon. The post reads that Zoe Saldana will star in and executive produce with at Reese W, a limited series adapted from at Tempry Lock's best-selling memoir from scratch. From Scratch centers on an American woman who falls in love with a Sicilian man while studying abroad in Italy and builds a life with him in the U.S. The book was published in April. So Donna said in a statement, this is a profound true love story and family about family deprivation nourishment that seems to be brought to life on the screen as Tremblay Locke brought it to life for me on the page. Uh, Locke's sister, Erica Locke, will serve as a showrunner and co-executive producer with Zaldana Wispoon, Lauren Neustadter, Richard Abadie, Jermaine Johnson, and Will Robboff. Uh, Wispoon says, Charlie's memoirs is a run in tendril and tendril um, pieces. Saldana most recently appeared in the film Avengers Endgame. Her last TV role was Rosemary Woodhouse in the NBC miniseries adaptation of Rosemary's Baby. ABC and Disney Channel are set to air three holiday specials. They'll offer sneak peeks at new attractions coming to Disney theme parks, live performances, and the Christmas parade. ABC will kick off things on November 28th with the Wonderful World of Disney magical history, uh, holiday celebration at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Matthew Morrison, Emma Button, and Jesse Palmer will be hosting from the Cinderella Castle at Walt Disney World Resort and Sleeping Beauty Castle at Disneyland Resort in California. The first special will feature an exclusive look at the Star Wars Rise of the Resistance ride, which will be opening the Star Wars Galaxy Edge uh, parks on December 5th at Disney's Hollywood Studios in Florida and January 17th at Disneyland Park in California. A magical holiday celebration will also be presented. Uh, will be presented holiday themes, performances from Sting and Shaggy, Portugal the Man, Pentatonix, Ingrid Michaelson, Andy Grammer, Allie Brooke, Button, Morrison, and Lindsay Sterry. 
Disney Channel's holiday party at Walt Disney World will then air on Disney Channel on December 13th at 8 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. Zombies 2 stars Meg Donnelly and Milo Mayhem will be hosting the program with Morrison. The show will feed, also take place from the Disney Fantasy Cruise Ship. We'll give a sneak peek at Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway Ride coming to Disney Hollywood Studios in the spring 2020 in Disneyland Park at a later date. New footage from Zombies 2 and performances by Donnelly, Disney Channel stars Isaac Ryan Brown, Ruby Rose Turner, and Kyle Cantrell. Pentonic and Shaq will also take place. Disney Pad Park's Magical Christmas Day Parade will broadcast on ABC on Christmas Day at a 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The annual special will be hosted by Morrison, uh, Button, Palmer, and co-star, co-hosted by Blackish star Marisa Mitchell and Lion King star J.D. McCrary. Uh, Disney Park Magical Christmas Day Parade will include, um, Christopher, uh, include broadcast of Disney's Christmas Day Parade. Walt Disney World and Disney. Shia LaBeouf discussed on Jimmy Kimmel Live his new movie, Honey Boy, and how he wrote the film while in here rehab. The actor said on Wednesday about the experience. They say you have PTSD. You got to start writing because this is how you get to the solution. The only way out is through. So I started writing all these dark chapters in my life. It wound up being the script form thing. Sent it to my friend. Became a movie. Honey Boy, which opened in theaters on Friday, also stars LaBeouf as a fictionalized version of his father. The film features Noah Jupe and Lucas Hedges portraying a younger and older version of a character based on LaBeouf. The movie, directed by Alma Harrell, chronicles LaBeouf's struggle as a child actor and his tense relationship with his father. LaBeouf says, my dad's a pretty off-colored character. He wasn't like too enthused about me playing him. He continued about how he got his father to sign off on Honey Bee. So I lied to him and told him that Mel Gibson would be playing him. The Metropolitan Museum of Art is sharing new details about its 2020 Costume Institute benefit. The New York Museum announced in a press release Thursday that the event, also known as the Met Gala, will take place May 4th and center on the theme of about time, fashion, and duration. Uh, Niccolo Gervia, Limuel Miranda, Emma Stone, Meryl Streep, and Anna Wontour will serve as co-chairs. The event will mark Miranda and Streep's first Met Gala. The gala proceeds the About Time, Fashion, Duration exhibit at the Costume Institute, which will run May 7th through September 7th. The exhibit traces fashion from 1870 to the present and will feature approximately 160 examples of women's fashion. About Time explores the concept of times and how clothes create associations that combine the past, present, and future. The exhibit will present a linear Chronologically, uh, chronologically, uh, of mainly black ensembles inter- interrupted with counter chronicles, chronicles of white clothes that relate in some way. The exhibit will use the writings of Virginia Woolf to further the examination of concept of time. Michael Cunningham, whose novel The Houses was inspired by Woolf's book, Mrs. Dalloway, will write a new short story for the exhibit that reflects on the concept of duration. Med director Mac Holian said this exhibition will consider the ephemeral uh, epidermal uh, nature of fashion, employing flashbacks and fast forwards to reveal how it can be both linear and, and soliloquial. As much, the show will present a nuanced continuum of fashion over the museum's 150 year history. Kim Kardashian, Ka- uh, Katie Holmes, and Priyanka Chopra and Nick Jonas were among the stars to attend the 2019 Met Gala in May. The 2019 event had, had the theme Camp. Camp Notes of Fashion. Mom to be Ashley Graham says she's expecting a baby boy. A 13 year old model discussed her pregnancy and her unborn son during Thursday's episode of the Elna Jarrett Show. Graham is expecting her first child with husband Justin Irvin. 
She tells Ellen the journal she is due in January and is feeling good but very pregnant. She says there's no more time for naps, so I've just been kind of working out in between everything. It's kind of wild. Graham also says she experienced pregnancy brain or a pregnancy-induced brain fog during a recent glam session with her makeup artist. She says after she sent the six photos, I realized I had given her the wrong phone number. Someone sent back a thumbs up, and it wasn't me. So there was photos of me out and about in the world. Graham announced her unborn baby sex during a a lightning round of questioning with DeGeneres. She says, I'm going to be a mommy to a boy. I'm having a boy. Graham had announced her pregnancy in August. She showed off her baby bump in a fitting, uh, firm-fitting dress while attending the CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund Awards this week. Tiffany Haddish announced on Instagram Thursday that her new Netflix comedy special titled Black Mar- Mar- uh, Black Mavisa um, Black Mar- uh, Mitzvisa uh, will be released December 3rd. Haddish discussed the special's title in a video addressed to fans. Haddish says, I'm Jewish by DNA. I did my 23andMe. I know what I am, a real Hebrew over here. Um, she continued, and because of my father, I want to honor him and our ancestors. I want to do something that uh, that represents growth and maturity, and I want to teach. That's what I've been put on this plan to do, is to teach, and Judaism is all about. The stand-up set will feature the comedian getting in touch with her Jewish roots, reflecting on fame, the time she received a jumpsuit from Beyonce, her infamous New Year's Eve show in Miami, and more, the streaming service says. Haddish presented a Netflix comedy special in August that featured six other comedians titled They Ready. Oprah Winfrey has selected Olive again as a new book club pick. Winfrey announced the news Thursday while appearing with Olive again author Elizabeth Stroud on CBS This Morning. Olive again is a sequel to Stroud's 2008 novel Olive Kidridge. Olive Kidridge was adapted as a 2014 HBO miniseries starring Frances McDormand as a title character. Olive again follows Olive, a stubborn and blunt woman from her 70s into her 80s. The book makes up of 13 short stories, explores Olive's second marriage and complicated relationship with her son. Winfrey had nothing but praise for the Stroud, who won a Pulitzer Prize for fiction, and Olive for Olive Kidridge. Winfrey says one of Stout's secret gifts is that she takes what is the ordinary and makes it extraordinary. Her give is taking the simplest of things and turning them into something that feels real to us. Winfrey confirmed the news in a tweet Thursday. She wrote, my next at Oprah's book club pick is uh, going to a different direction than the last one. Olive again, Olive. She wrote, my next at Oprah book club pick is going to be a different direction than the last one. Olive, again, by at Liz Strutz. As cranky as Olive is, she teaches us so much about loneliness, empathy, and loss. All the things that make us all human. Winfrey revived her Oprah's book club on Apple TV Plus this fall. The Tanisha Coates debut novel, The Water Dancer, was her first book pick club of the revival. Right winning singer Taylor Swift will headline Capital One Jam Fest in April. Capital One announced in a tweet Thursday that Swift will perform the free show April 5th in Atlanta, Georgia. The post reads, Atlanta, we can't calm down. And Taylor Swift 13 is headlining our free Capital One Jam Fest on April 5th, 2020. Uh, Master Martinus Capitals. Jam Fest is an annual concert that takes place during the NAA March Madness Music Festival, which runs from April 3rd to the 5th this year. Previous headlines include Kay Perry and More Room 5. The NCAA Senior Vice President of Basketball Table, played by Tammy Gavitt. 
said in a statement. He added, this will be one of the many great events for fans during um, office office um, for fans during Final Four weekend from the opening of the Final Four Fan Fest pre- presented by Capital One on Friday morning through the semifinals to the national championship celebrated on Monday night. Jam Fest is Swift's only U.S. concert in 2020 outside her Lower Fest tour dates. She'll perform U.S. shows in July and August during the tour. Lady Gaga is feeling devastated after canceling one of her Las Vegas shows due to illness. The 33-year-old singer and actress missed Wednesday's concert at, of her Ignima residency at the Park Theater at Park MGM after coming down with a sinus infection and bronchitis. Lady Gaga shared a photo of on Twitter of herself using a ventilator while sitting with an IV in her arm. The star wrote, I'm so devastated I can't perform tonight for so many people who have traveled to come see me. I have a sinus infection and bronchitis and feel very sick and sad. I never want to let you down. I'm just too weak and ill to perform tonight. She told fans, I love you, little monsters. I'll make it up to you, I promise. Park MGM confirmed the news Wednesday on Twitter and said Lady Gaga intends to perform Friday as scheduled. The post reads, with her deepest regrets, and Lady Gaga announced the cancellation of Tuesday's performance at Park MGM because she is suffering from a sinus infection and bronchitis. She plans to return to the stage for her scheduled show on Friday, November 8th. Lady Gaga was injured in October after falling off stage while dancing with the fan. She subsequently shared an x-ray and told fans she was going to be okay. In addition to her Las Vegas residency, Lady Gaga launched her own makeup line, Hover House. In addition to her Las Vegas residency, Lady Gaga launched her own makeup line, Haas Laboratories, in September. She said in an interview with Elle that she created the line to be inclusive to everyone. The apparent suicide of the popular K-pop singer known as Suli has sparked a national controversy in South Korea about misogyny and cyberbullying. Uh, Choring Jin Ri, known as Suli, a girl group FX, was found dead in her home in Sinagon by police, sparking a closer look at her career as a musician and a feminist who is often the target of cruel internet trolls. Yuduri, a South comedian, uh, Korean com- uh, comic artist who writes about feminism, told UPI I was surprised and angry by Suli's death. At first, I couldn't really process that it actually happened. I wanted her to thrive and lived on because she represents survivors. Some have blamed celebrity gossip reporters and online trolls for Sully's death, prompting several anti-cyber bullying bills to enter the National Assembly in recent weeks. Others are worried about copycat suicides and have flooded social media accounts belonging to singer IU, another feminist icon and close friend of Sully's with words of compassion. Since Sully's death, IU's 2012 song, Peach, which was reportedly inspired by her friendship with Tuli, re-emerged at the top of streaming charts. I used label, also postponed the release of her new album because of emotional stress. And here are the top 10 songs on the Billboard Hot 100 single charts for the week of November 9th. Number 10, Billy Eilish with Bad Guy. Number 9, Little Nas X with Panini. Number 8, Chris Brown featuring Drake with No Guy. Number 7, Kanye West with... Follow God, number six, Lizzo with Good as Hell, number five, Lizzo with Truth Hurts, number four, Senorita, uh, Shawn Mendes and Camille Cabell with Senorita, number three, Post Malone with Circles, number two, Louis Capaldi with Someone You Love, and the number one song on the Billboard Hot 100 single charts for the week of November 9th, Selena Gomez with Lose You to Love Me. And as your entertainment report for Thursday, November 7th, 2019, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back on Monday to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report 
anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainer Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.